Hello, you discovery enthusiast. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Please note, this is the third video in the series. If you haven't watched the previous videos, please do watch them. Thank you. So far, we have discussed why do we need deduplication? What is deduplication? Why hash is considered a unique identifier? Today, let's throw some light on the mechanics of deduplication. We already know deduplication is a process where we identify multiple copies of a given document, suppress its duplicates and retain only one copy. And the best way to compare two documents is by matching them against the digital fingerprint called a hash. Hash is generated by an algorithm which has ability to compute the document contents and spit out a unique alphanumeric string per document. Many hashing algorithms can generate digest hash, but only three are widely used in e-discovery. And the most popular algorithms in the e-discovery world are MD5 hash, SHA1 hash, SHA256 hash, and all processing tools widely implement MD5 hash. That was over the top, but MD5 hash does deserve a grand entry. MD5 hash is represented in 32 alphanumeric character. It is computed by hashing the binary contents of a file. The MD5 algorithm is such that a single bit difference will result in a very different digest hash. While generating MD5 hash, processing tools only consider content of a document and ignores context like file name, date, title, etc. Most processing tools generate the MD5 hash very early because denisting requires MD5 hash. The MD5 hash of a document is compared against a list of system files available in NIST list. Denisting helps in removing any system generated files within the collected data. Each processing tool follows its proprietary protocol for generating MD5 hash. Though the algorithm doesn't change, the parameters passed to the algorithm can vary. However, for standalone and loose files, most processing tools follow identical protocols to generate MD5 hash. Unfortunately, the same is not true for emails. So let's see how processing tools create MD5 hash for each document type. For standalone documents, the full binary stream of a file is considered as input, but completely ignores the file's context. That means same file with different paths, names, dates will get the same MD5 hash. Though context does not affect MD5 hash, the difference in file encoding, file compression, file format does impact MD5 hash value. Therefore, two documents that are visually identical but having different formats will have different MD5 hashes. Let's see how hashing an email is different from a standalone document. For a standalone document, the entire binary stream is provided as an input to the hashing algorithm. Whereas for emails, a variety of components are selected, customized, and then provided as an input to the hashing algorithm. In fact, each processing tool deploys a unique methodology to generate hash for an email. For example, if we have to generate hash for this email using tool A, then tool A may only consider from, to, cc, and email body and provide them as an input to the hashing algorithm. And now, if we provide the same email to tool B, along with from, to, cc, email body, it may also consider BCC and date information as an input to the hashing algorithm. Therefore, an email processed in two different tools will not have same hash. Sometimes identical emails can have different hash due to inconsistent headers or formatting. The header information can vary depending on the servers that emails go through. Sometimes the email clients or applications that we use to read the email can also impact their formatting. For example, the email format on a mobile phone will be very different to a laptop. Another very important note is, 
archiving and backup systems often change the email's binary content. That means a live email's binary content will be different from an archived email. Hence, we generate different hash. And there are many other reasons on why two identical emails would have different hashes. Maybe we can have a live series after I finish this series. I would love to continue, but unfortunately, that is all for today. In our next video, we'll discuss about document grouping and ordering. Daddy, we're late for school. Oh no. Hey, you're gonna take late note at school, okay? No, you take it. We are late because of your DDoT videos. And it's time. Signing off. Yours truly, an e-discover enthusiast, daddy to naughty girl, first and foremost, a human navigating life bravely and meaningfully alongside you.